So you're ready to buy a new laptop, but you want to be both absolutely sure that you are going to love this machine, but also confident that you aren't overspending on redundant power. It's quite the puzzle, but we're going to solve it right now. Hello guests, Ritzy Bellhop here, and today we will be discussing the best laptop to buy on a per dollar basis. Now identifying the best laptop is a little trickier than some of the other items I've chosen to analyze on this channel. Sure, narrowing it down to brand is easy enough. Much like the smartphone sector, the top manufacturers in terms of build quality and battery life are Samsung and Apple. But which model you choose to buy is going to be highly dependent on what tasks you are going to want to perform with your machine. So I considered three different categories of laptop shoppers and chose the optimal laptop to buy for each one. The first type of buyer I considered are the non-power users. These are people who aren't looking for anything fancy, they just need an affordable machine to be able to do work, check email, maybe watch a little YouTube. If that's you, then the standard 13-inch Galaxy Book 360 offers superb value at only $800. It has an i7 processor, 16 gigabytes RAM, and sports an average eight hours battery life. The 360 part of its name refers to its ability to fold in half, allowing the user to write or draw on it using the Galaxy S Pen. However, I must say, if that drawing feature is super important to you because you want to be making 2D art on the go all the time, you would probably be better served opting for an iPad Pro with a keyboard attachment. I say that because you'll have access to the best mobile 2D art program, Procreate. Plus, the Apple Pencil is just a little bit more responsive and the tip is more durable than the Galaxy S Pen. So, within the non-power user category, iPad Pro for 2D artists, and 13-inch Galaxy Book 360 for everyone else. The second group of buyers that I considered are the gamers and the 3D modelers. For both of you guys, you're gonna need a fairly beefy Nvidia graphics card in order to play your games and run programs like Blender and Unity. Luckily, the ultra version of the Galaxy Book comes with an Nvidia RTX 4070 when configured with an i9 processor and 32 gigs RAM. Unlike nearly every other gaming laptop that I've tried, the Galaxy Book Ultra is impressively thin at only 17 millimeters thick, and it has an above average 10 hours battery life when using it for less intensive tasks. In fact, the only downside that I can see about the Ultra is that it can be configured to a maximum of one terabyte hard drive, which I can imagine can feel a little constraining to this type of user but it's still large enough to comfortably have both the first and the second largest games of all time installed simultaneously. Personally, I can't remember a time where I was actively playing more than two games, so if I did play my games on PC or if I was a 3D modeler, the Galaxy Book Ultra would definitely be my pick. Now for the third type of buyer that I considered. These are going to be the folks who don't much care for laptop gaming and instead highly prioritize either their video editing or indie music production hobby. I belong to this category, which is precisely why I went with Apple's newest MacBook Pro. You see, going with MacBook allowed me access to Apple's video editing software, Final Cut Pro which as a one-time $300 purchase that automatically updates to the latest version for free is easily the best video editing software for the cost. For comparison, it costs $250 every year to use Adobe's Premiere Pro, and a similar case for MacBook could be made for those wanting access to Apple's music production software, Logic Pro. Another advantage to MacBook is the phenomenal speakers built into the machine. No other laptop quite measures up to MacBook when it comes to sound quality, making it all the more valuable to musicians and video editors alike because you need the sound that you hear to be as accurate as possible to what's actually on the recording. In fact, part of the reason why I went with the 16-inch model is because it has larger speakers than the 14-inch, allowing for richer bass sounds. The other reason why I went with the 16 inch is because it has a larger cooling system, which means it doesn't get as hot while editing, which is particularly important for me because I tend to enjoy working with my laptop actually in my lap, which I can do for up to 15 hours before plugging in again. The battery life on MacBook these days is truly remarkable. 
When it comes to component configuration for Mac, I recommend sticking with the default M Pro chip and 16 gigabytes RAM, because that's gonna be plenty for running both Logic Pro and Final Cut. Even in my own experience editing in 4K, I've had absolutely no trouble working with these default specs. As for hard drive size, I recommend one terabyte. It's definitely sufficient for all the files you'll be working with in any given moment. And if you need more space for those older files that you aren't currently working on, it's more cost effective to buy an external hard drive than to pay to upgrade the internal one. So for all you musicians and video editors out there, go for the one terabyte 16 inch MacBook Pro. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Something else I'd like to mention, it seems like every company in the world will try to sell you insurance on their products and Apple and Samsung are no different. Overall, it is not financially wise to buy product insurance on anything. You see, when you buy product insurance, you are effectively betting that the product will fail in the allotted time of the warranty. If it does, you profit off the repair. But if it doesn't, the company took your money without offering any additional goods or services. Much like a casino, this is not a fair game because the company knows their product inside and out and they will always adjust the price or the length of the warranty in a way where the majority of warranty purchases will end up profiting the company at the expense of the consumer. So don't be tempted into the trap. In the long run, buying warranties will only hurt you. For reference, I've owned two MacBooks before this one, and in both cases, the point of failure was the battery. My 2011 model lasted five years before the battery failed, and my 2016 model lasted seven. In both cases, had I paid the $300 for AppleCare, I would have gotten nothing in return because AppleCare only lasts for three years. Plus, even if the battery had failed within the guarantee window, the cost to replace a battery is only $50 more than the AppleCare plan itself. Paying $300 up front for the chance at a $50 profit is not a good wager. Having said that, I placed links in the description below to all the machines I've discussed. I'm sure that once you select the one that fits your needs, you will find it to be quite optimal. If you'd like to watch some more videos on optimal living, I've left them for you just to the right of the hat rack. And should you ever have need of a ritzy bellhop again, you can summon me by ringing that secret bell that appears after hitting the subscribe button.